Bishop. First time it's been done in the area. And we're pleased to have Todd Ellis as the director and the wonderful cast of people. And uh, I'm looking forward very much to this season. Uh, I'm not going to bore you with the season because the season is shown on the back of the cover. Also, the uh, prices of these season tickets have not changed. We have a wonderful season this year. I'm going to point out just two things. For our Christmas production, we're doing the third annual traditional production of Dickens of a Christmas, written by Pat Latito and Ken Prescott. It's their third year with that. And also, in February, or February 27th, we'll be opening our platinum anniversary production, our 20th anniversary production of Jesus Christ Superstar. It's been a very eventful year for us. Thanks very much to all of you. Uh, the little 50 drawings that we've done after the show, the exhibitions, uh, and the fundraisers we've uh, uh, managed to produce revenue enough to outfit ourselves, our theater, our building with a new heating plant. And this summer, unfortunately, after we, uh, after our production of Joseph and the Amazing Technic, got our green green coat. We finally had our air conditioning system hooked up. And it's not working. So from here on, we'll have heat in the winter and cooling in the summer. As so many of you have. Uh, I've written a note in the inside page of the program. Uh, in it, it spells out how I feel and how much I appreciate all of you and all that you've done for us past, uh, right now, hopefully in the future. Uh, a couple of words about tonight's production. Uh, there should be no cameras in the building against uh, copyright laws, taking, uh, taking the pictures, and it's a no smoking building. So without further ado, uh, welcome to Noises Off, our opening night production. Thank you very much. Say that, Dottie, my precious. 
What about the words, love? Oh. Can I get some of them right? Some of them have a very familiar ring. A lid's like a fruit machine in there. I know that, Dottie. I open my mouth and I don't know whether it's going to come up three oranges or two lemons and a banana. Anyway, it's not midnight yet. We don't open till tomorrow. So, you're holding the receiver. So, okay. holding the receiver. Squire, squire, hackerman, hold on. Squire, squire, hackerman, hold on. Always the same, isn't it? Put your feet up for two minutes and immediately they come running off to you. Hold it. My housekeeper, yes. Hold it, Gaddy, Dotty! Hold it, Brooke, Dotty! Come back? Yes, and go out with the newspaper. The newspaper? Oh, the newspaper! You leave the sardines, you put the receiver back, and you go out with the newspaper. Here you are, love. Sorry, love. Don't worry, Dr. Love. It's only the technical. It's the dress, Gary, honey. It's a dress rehearsal. So when was the technical? So when's the dress? We open tomorrow. Well, we're all thinking of it, the technical, aren't we, love? It's all those words, my sweet. Oh, don't worry about the words, Dr. My pets. Coming up like oranges and lemons. Listen, Dr. Your words are fine. Your words are better than it. You know what I mean? Isn't that right? Uh, I mean, okay, so he's the, you know, fine. But Dottie Love, you play this kind of part. Well, Jesus, Dottie, you know what I mean. Okay, so, Gary and Brooke are off. Dottie's holding that receiver. No, and... but I mean, here we are. We're all thinking, my God, we open tomorrow. We've only had a fortnight to rehearse. We don't know where we are. And my God, here we are. That's right, my <laughs> sweet Isn't that right, boy? Beautifully put, Gary. No, but I mean, we play Western Supermare all the rest of this then Yeovil, and then God knows where, and then God knows where else, and then so on until God knows how long. And we're all of us pretty much feeling like, well, you know, I mean, aren't you? Sorry? Anyway, you two are off. Dottie's holding that receiver. Sorry, Lloyd. Sometimes you just have to come right out with it, you know? I know. Thanks, Lloyd. Okay, so, you two are off. Dottie... Let me just say one thing, oh. since we've stopped. I've worked with a lot of directors, Lloyd. Some of them were geniuses, and some of them were bastards. But I never met one who was so totally and absolutely... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. I'm very touched. Now, will you please get off the fucking stage and Brooke? Yes. Are you in? Am I in? Are you there? What? Yeah, okay. I'll call again. And on we go. So, there you are, holding that receiver. There I am, holding the receiver. I put the receiver back and I leave the sardines. Always the same story, isn't it? And you take the newspaper. <coughs> I leave the sardines. I take the newspaper. Always the same story, isn't it? It's a weight off your mind. It's a load off your stomach. And oh, the last I am. Leaving the receiver. Oh. My housekeeper, yes, this is her afternoon off. So we've got the place entirely to ourselves. Uh, let me check. Hello? Is, uh, is anyone home? Nope, no one here. So, what do you think? Right, is it all yours? Well, it's just a little shack in the woods, really. Converted posset mill, 16th century. It must have cost the bomb! Well, one has to have somewhere to entertain one's business associates. Or well, someone coming at four o'clock, in fact. Harold. Oil, you know. Right, and I've got to bring those files to our basement stone office by the pool. Yes, we'll just manage to fit it in. I mean, we'll only just do it. I mean, <laughs> right, then. Oh, we won't bother to chill the champagne. All these stores! Oh, only a handful, really. A study, kitchens, and a self contained service flat for the housekeeper. Terrific. In which one's the, uh. What? You know. Uh, oh, oh, through here. Fantastic. Now I've lost the party. I'm sorry, I'm Squire, Squire, Hackham and Dudley. Well, which one are you then, Squire, Squire, Hackham or Dudley? I'm Trampleman. Walking in here as if you own the place. I thought you were a burglar. Oh, no, no, no. I'm just here to uh, go into a few things. I mean, uh, check a few of the measurements. Well, I mean, do one or two odd jobs. Well, in the project, yes. I'm showing a prospective tenant over the house. What's wrong with this dog? She's thinking of renting if her interest is definitely aroused. Oh, that's not the bedroom. The bedroom? Oh, no, no. That's the downstairs bathroom in WC Suite. And this is the housekeeper, Mrs. Crockett. Clack it, dear. Clack it. Oh, hi. She's not really here. Only it's the color. It's the royal 
right, you know. It's black and white to do. Well, don't worry about us. So I'll just keep the sound on low. You'll just inspect the house. Only, now I've lost the newspaper. Sardines. That's all right. Sardines. Sardines. I've forgotten the sardines. Lloyd, these bloody sardines. We've got to do something about them. We can't go on like this. Can't go on like what? <laughs> Daddy. I mean, okay, it's all right for you sitting out there, but we've got to work with the sardines, and we all feel the same, don't we? Sorry? The sardines. What's that? <laughs> yes, but I mean, we're all up here, working our backsides off, and there are four plates of sardines coming on in the first act alone. Do you know what I mean? Poppy! So, you want something instead of the sardines, is that what you're saying, Daddy? You want Poppy to mash up some banana? Well, we don't want four plates of mashed banana. Poppy, we're changing the sardines. But we're not getting at you, Poppy, though. And then we think the sardines are lovely. Oh, I'd be perfectly happy with the sardines if you were happy with them, love. I'm happy with them if you're happy with them, love. So, Gary, honey, what exactly are you saying? What we're saying, boy, is simply this. Here we are, busting our guts up here and... Christ! Right. Got that, Poppy? Um, well, I... Then I'm go from Dottie's exit and Poppy. Yes? Don't let this happen again. Oh, no. Sorry, Lloyd. I thought we ought to get that straight. It's okay, Gaddy. Just so long as Dottie's happy. Absolutely happy, Lloyd, my sweet. Then will you do something for me, Dottie, my precious? Anything, Lloyd, my love. Take the sardines off with you. I'm sorry about this. That's all right. We don't want the television, do we? Well, only she's been in the family for generations. Great. Come on, then. I've got to be in making stuff by four. Well, perhaps we should just have a glass of champagne. We'll take it up with us. Yes, well... And don't let my file out of sight. Well, no, only... What? Well, huh? she has been in the family for generations. Sardine, sardine. Not for me to say, of course, dear. Only I will just say this. Don't think twice about it. Take the plunge. You'll really enjoy it, dear. Oh, right. Won't you laugh? Yes, well, yes. And we'll enjoy having you. Won't we laugh? Oh, well. <laughs> oh, sardines, sardines. Can't put your feet up on an empty stomach <coughs> now, can you? You see? She thinks it's great. She's even making us sardines. Well. I think she's terrific. Terrific. So which one? All right, before she comes back with the sardines. Up here. Yes, yes. In here. Yes, yes, yes. It's another bar. Cupboard. Oh, this one, this one, this one. Oh, you're a real style. Oh, come on, then. You can't even get the door open. Oh, yes, and then Mrs. Mrs. Clack is off. Hold it. We've got the place entirely. Hold it. And God said, hold it. And they held it. And God saw that it was terrible. Sorry, love. The door won't open. I'm sorry, love. This door won't close. And God said, Poppy. Sorry, everyone. Am I doing something wrong? Look you know how stupid I am about the doors. Oh, Freddie, my sweet. You're doing it perfectly. Oh, as long as it didn't mean it's broken. And there was Poppy, and God said, be fruitful and multiply, and fetch Tim to fix the doors. Oh, I love technicals. Oh, she loves technicals. Isn't she just, I mean, right, she loves technicals. Where's Dot? Dotty? Everyone's always so nice to everyone. Isn't she just, I mean, she really is, isn't she? Oh, Belinda's being all, you know. Oh, but Fred, my sweet, don't you like a nice all night nice technical? The only thing I like about technicals is you get a chance to sit on the furniture. Oh, Freddie, it's lovely to see you cheering up and making jokes. Oh, is that a joke? This is such a lovely company to work with. It's such a happy company. Wait till we get to stop the Nazis in 12 weeks' time. Are you all right, Lloyd, my precious? I'm beginning to know what God felt like when he sat up there in the darkness creating the world. What did he feel like, Lloyd, my love? Very pleased he'd taken his Valium. Well, he had six days, of course. We've only got six hours. And God said, where the hell is Tim? And where the hell was Tim? And God said, let there be doors that open when they open and close when they close. Do something. Doors. I'm just getting the sardines for the banana. Doors. Doors. I bet God had a stage manager who understood English too. Tim, my sweet, this door won't close. Oh, the bedroom won't, you know. Oh, right. He hasn't been to bed for 48 hours. Don't worry, Tim. Only another 24 hours till the end of the day. Oh, look, he's come down to earth among us. Listen, but soon we'll stop anyway. Okay, so it took two days to get the setup, so we shan't have time for adjustments. Don't worry. Think of opening night of the dressing room. If we can 
just get through the play once tonight for dolls and sardines because that's what it's all about. Dolls and sardines. <laughs> getting the sardines on, getting the sardines off. That's false. That's their love. That is life. Oh God, Lloyd, you're so deep. So just keep going. <laughs> Time flying irrevocably into the 
into the park. Aren't they sweet? What? Yeah, they're the adopted. Yeah, they're the adopted. You mean they're supposed to be a secret. But she's old enough to be. Daddy? And Doggy? Travel me and Mrs. Clackett? <laughs> Didn't you know? I am just thoughtful, Linda dear. I am just the moment that you disagree. I don't know anything. Well, what's happening? You tell me what's happening, Daddy Love. I mean, what are we waiting for? I don't know what you're waiting for. A 16th birthday? What? <laughs> or maybe just with you, Brooke. And you can't even get the door open. You can't even get the door open. Door closed, love. You can't even get the door open. Yes, but then this is Mrs. Black, the dog, and you We've got the place entirely to ourselves. Look at it. Do you like it? I can't believe it. It's a perfect place for an assignation. Oh, oh. a little secret hiding. The last place on earth anyone could look for us. Oh, but it's rather funny creeping in like this. It's damn serious. If in the would have find out we were in the country even for one night, Bengos are claimed to be residents abroad. Bengos not this year's income. I feel like an illegal immigrant. I'll tell you what I feel like. Champagne. I wonder if Mrs. Clackett's ever been. Oh, darling. Oh, why not? No children, no friends, no we're absolutely out of it. True. There is something to be said for being a tax exile. <laughs> oh, leave those! Oh, oh, shh! What? It's written in here. <laughs> what I did with that first lot of sardines, I shall never know. Mrs. Mrs. Blackett! Oh, you give me a tip. Me art jumped right out of me boots. So did mine. We thought you gone. I thought you was in Spain. We are, we are. You haven't seen us. We are not here. Oh, what that is it. The income tax are off, dear. Oh, well, they would be if they knew we were here. <laughs> All right, then, love. You're not here. I haven't seen you. If anyone asks, I don't know nothing. Oh, hey, off to bed, are you? Oh. Well, uh, that's right. Nothing like bed, but they all get on top of you. And you'll want your things, look. Oh, yes, thanks. And then then is a grenade bottle. Oh, I'll well, get a hot water bottle. And I put all your letters in your desk, love. Letters? What letters? You call all of them. Not the ones from the income tax. I don't want to spoil your holidays. Oh my God, where are they? I put them all in the little pigeon house. In the pigeon house? In the pigeon house, in your desk, cloth. Yes, but I can hear voices. What? What? The voice? Hold it. What's the trouble, Freddy? Well, Lord, you know how stupid I am about rules. Uh, sorry, Gary, sorry. It's just my usual dimness, but, well, why do I take the things with me into the study? It wouldn't be more natural if I left them all. No. I just thought it somehow might be more logical. No. Lloyd, I know it's a bit late in the day to be going in the Not at all, Freddy. We still have several more minutes left before we open. Oh, thank you, Lloyd, as long as we're not too pushed. Oh. I just never understood why he carries an overnight bag and a box of groceries into the study to look at his mail. Because they have to be out of the way for my next scene. Well, I see that. And Selsie needs him in the study for his scene. I see that. Uh, Selsie, where is he? Is he there? Selsie! 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 Am I on? Oh, no. <laughs> I thought I heard my voice. No, no, Selden, back to sleep. You're not on for another ten pages yet. Oh. Well, yes, I see all that. Oh, I, I no. just don't know why I came <laughs> Freddy, no. Why does anyone do anything? I mean, why does that other idiot walk out to the front door carrying two plates of sardines? Not getting at you, love. Of course not, love. I mean, why do I? I mean, Jesus, when you come to think about it, why do I? Who knows? Who knows? You see, Freddy, love, the wellsprings of human action are deep and cloudy. Maybe something happened to you as a very young child which made you frightened to let go of groceries. Or it could be genetic. Yes, or it could be, you know, could very well be. <laughs> yes, but all the same, I just... Sort of... Freddy! I am telling you, I don't know. I don't think the author knows. I don't know why the author came to this industry in the first place. I don't know why any of us came into it. All the same, if you could just give me a reason I can keep in my mind. Okay, Freddy. I'll tell you. The reason you carry those groceries into the study, Freddy, no, is because it is just slightly after midnight, and we're not going to be done with this play before we open tomorrow night. Correction! Before we open tonight! So let's take it from your exit with those groceries. You've had a very great fright when Mrs. Clack mentioned any tax, and, and you're feeling very insecure and exposed, and you're looking for something familiar to, to hold on to. Thank you, Lloyd. <laughs>
darling, I saw the door handle move. It could be someone from the office checking up. I still don't see why I have to put your tie on to look. Well, Mrs. Clockett. Mrs. Clockett? She's been in the family for generations. Oh, look, she's up in our sardines. No, 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 come back. What? I'll fetch them. You can't go downstairs like that. Like what? Well, Mrs. Crackett. Mrs. Crackett? She's irreplaceable. Sardines here, sardines there. It's like a Sunday school outing. I mean, still around. Give me every cover to all you. Oh, no, no, just checking the sheets and pillowcases and going through the inventory. Mrs. Platt, Clack it. Clack it, dear. Clack it, Clack it. Oh, Mrs. Platt, is, is there anyone else in the house? I haven't seen no one, Mom. Oh, I thought I heard voices. Voices? There's no voices here, dear. Oh, I must have imagined it. Oh, my God. I beg your pardon. Oh, my God. Why? What is it? <laughs> oh, my God. The study door's open. Oh, there's another car outside. That is Mr. Hackett's, is it? Oh, Mr. Final notice, steps will be taken to street proceedings in court. Oh yes, that reminds me. A gentleman come about the house. Don't tell me, I'm not here. He says he's got a lady quite aroused. Leave okay. everything to Squire Squire Hacking and Dudley. All right, Tom, I'll just let them go all over, shall I? Let them do anything, just as long as you don't tell anyone we're here. So I'll just sit down and turn on the sardines, sardines. I've forgotten the sardines. I don't know. If it wasn't fixed to my shoulders, I'd forget what day it was. I didn't get this. I'm not here. I'm in Spain. If I didn't get it, I didn't know this. Darling, I never had a dress like this, did I? Didn't you? Oh, I shouldn't buy anything <laughs> as tarty as this. Oh, it's not something you gave me, is it? Never should have touched it. Oh, no, it's, it's lovely. You stick it down. Put it back. Never saw it. Oh, well, I'll put it in the attic with all the other things you gave me that are just too precious to wear. <laughs> all right, all right. Now the study door's open again. What's going on? Darling, why did you lock the door? Why did I lock the door? Why did you lock the door? I didn't lock the door. Someone locked the door. Well, anyway, we can't stand here like this. Like what? In your underwear. Okay, I'll tie the door. Oh, no, in here, in here. Oh, oh darling, this glue isn't a special food drying disorder, is it? The Hold it. Stuck. Ah, Mrs. Crackett made us some salt. Hold it. We have a problem. Oh, bad luck. Which one's this time? Left. It's the left one, everybody. Left one! It could be gone over the thing and fall it down. Somewhere else again. Why did you not see it? Oh, she didn't see it because it was in her eyes. It was probably on. Why did I lock the door? She opens her eyes, very sort of, you know, don't you, my sweet? I always feel I ought to rush forward and. Oh, my, where you put your feet oh. on? Yes, everyone look under their feet. No one moved their feet. Oh, everyone put their feet back exactly where they were. Pick up your feet one by one. <laughs> Brooke, look, is this going to happen during a performance? We don't want the audience to miss the last buses and trains. Oh, she'll just carry on. Won't you, my sweet? Yes, but can she see anything without them? Can't she hear anything without them? Sorry.
one in the bathroom filling hot water bottles. You just think there's something creepy going on? No, and now you're coming to bed, aren't you? What did you say? I didn't say anything. You pressed the door handle and now the hot water bottle. I didn't know goose pimples all over. Yes, quick, get something round you. Get the covers over our heads. Just a moment. What have I done with those sardines? <gasps> oh, you wait here. You hear all sorts of funny things about these old houses? Oh, yes, but this one has been extensively modernized throughout. I can't see how anything creepy would survive oil, fire, central heating, and... What? What did... What's happening? The sardines, they've gone. Perhaps there is something funny going on. I'm getting in bed and putting my head in... I put them there. Oh, was it there? I'm breaking into paper bags. 
I know they're all in Spain, because the old turkey in the kitchen told me so. <laughs> and I know she's out, because I just saw her coming out of the front door, wearing her swimming costume. <laughs> now, where is the front door? <laughs> ah, right. Get the van loaded. <laughs> no rush. We've only got all flaming <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> well, what are they offering? Ah, one microwave oven. <laughs> hey, let's see. What? Fifty quid? <laughs> it's hardly worth lifting. Junk. All of this is oh, junk. Everything here, junk. <laughs> oh. Well, if you insist. <laughs> now, where's his desk? Where's his desk? Oh, they all say the same thing. It's hard to adjust to retirement. <laughs> and the prospective tenant naturally wishes to know if there's any previous history of paranormal phenomena. Oh, yes, dear. It's all nice and paranormal. I mean, has anything ever dematerialized before? Has anything ever flown about? Flown about? No, dear. The things just move themselves on their own two feet like they do in any house. Well, I'll tell the prospective tenant. She's in inspecting the study. There's a man in there. No, no, there's no one in that house well, Look, look, he's searching for something. I can't see no more. You can't see him? Well, this is extraordinary. And where is my prospective tenant? I left her in there, and now she's gone. My prospective tenant has disappeared. Oh, my God. Now what? There. Where? The sardines. <coughs> oh, the sardines. Oh, you can see the sardines, can you? I can see the sardines. I can see the way they are going, too. No, I'm not letting these sardines out of my hand. But where is my prospective tenant? I can see I'm going to be opening sardines all night. In and out of there like a cuckoo on a clock. And he said, Charles, he said, you're 70 years old. It's time you hung up your sawed off shotgun. Time you let a younger man take over the ammonia bottle. Where's she gone? Oh, she has gone back into the bedroom. I may be 70 years old, but I've still got all my wits about me. <laughs> he didn't have an answer to that one. Vicky! Vicky! If he did, I didn't do it. <laughs> Darling, there's something he's through anything. Does he through blue? It does he through trousers? Darling, you think that he's through trousers that goes underneath through? Oh, darling, I think I'd better get these trousers off. <laughs> darling, help, this is an emergency. Have we got any stuff that stops and stuff that stops and stuff? I mean, it leads through anything. <gasps> darling, I think I can feel it. I can get into absolutely everything. <laughs> There's something evil in this house. He's in remedy. He's back. No, no, I'm not here. Oh, my God, I'm abroad. He's walking abroad. Let's go. Stay. I'm not stay. Speak. Only in the presence of my lawyer. Only in the... Oh, hold on, hold on. You're just an intruder, an ordinary intruder. Well, uh, nice to meet you, I mean, uh, have a sardine. No, you're not. You're some kind of sex criminal. <laughs> You've done something with Vicky. I'm going to come downstairs and sort you out. Well, I see that you have some sardines, and, well, then, if there's a... Well, maybe nothing more I can offer you. I think I'll come back under the law. <laughs> House. Yes, a sex criminal, and a young woman is missing. It's in the yard now, it's a man! Sorry, the young woman is right here. You all right? No, oh, he almost saw me! Oh, he almost saw her! Oh, he's a burglar as well, he's taking our things! The things are here! Oh, the things have come back, so we're just missing a plate of sardines. Here are sardines! We found the sardines! This is the police? You want the police here in my underwear? So what am I saying? I'm saying, let's say no more about it. Just to have a Jimmy riddle. <laughs> That's of course some stupid bird goes and starts talking about it. Oh God, where is it? Oh. Just stay in there and don't come out till you're not dressed. I can't go in front of our taxpayers wearing this. I knew I shouldn't have brought the subject up. 
Freddy. God, I'm being clever out here. What's going to be left of this play when I've gone back to London and you're up there on your own? So, where's my line? What's that, Dad? Yes, but I don't understand. It's what's that, Dad? 
Yes, you see, I, I say to you, but I'll tell you one thing, Vicky, and you say to me, what's that, Dad? Yes, but I don't understand why the sheep look so much like Philip. <laughs> Poppy, bring the book. Is that the line, Poppy, though? I don't understand why the sheep looks like Philip. <laughs> Can we consult the author's text and make absolutely sure? Well, I think that it's... What's that, Dad? We all know you've worked in very classy places up in London, where they let you make up the plays you go along. But we don't want that kind of thing happening here, love. <laughs> Not when the author has provided us with just a considered and polished line of his own. Not at one o'clock in the morning. Not two lines away from the end of the act. Not when we're just about to get a tea break before we all drop dead at exhaustion. We merely want to hear the line, what? Another piece 